Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango November here from Survival Tech Nord. Today we're talking about QRP and QRP Plus radios and the power supplies we use with them in the field. So when I say QRP and QRP Plus, I'm talking about radios like the Yaesu FT817 and 818, the Elecraft KX2 and KX3, the Lab 599TX500 or the ICOM IC705. Or finally, the Zygu G90 or X5105. So really, for the sake of this conversation, we're talking about any radio which draws less than 5 amps of current at full transmit power. So, if you stick with me, I'll tell you all about it. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign area. So the one thing a few of these radios have in common is they either require or work best in the field with an external power supply. So I'm going to show you a lightweight, easy to carry solution from Powerfilm, one you may not have thought of or didn't know about. The power supply we're talking about is actually the Powerfilm Lightsaver Max. Now, before we move forward, I want you to think of the Powerfilm Lightsaver Max as more of a power bank which can recharge itself than simply a solar panel. Now, the reason I want us to think about it as more of a power bank than just a solar panel is because of its internal 18 amp hour or 60 watt hour lithium ion battery pack. This internal lithium ion battery pack is the reason we make a distinction between the panels you've seen on the channel before and the Powerfilm Lightsaber Max. Not only can the Lightsaber Max recharge itself with its integrated solar panel, it also puts out a stable 12.3 volts at a maximum of 5 amps. This is perfect for most of the QRP radios on the market today. So far, I've had the opportunity to test the Lightsaber Max with the Yaesu FT817ND and the Yaesu FT818, the Zygu X5105, the Zygu G90, the Vertex Standard VX1210, and the Lab 599 Discovery TX500. Now, most of the manufacturers specking the voltage for these radios are specifying 13.8 volts for these rigs. Now, as we all know, in the real world, a battery is not always going to stay at 13.8 volts. And just like our QRP radios, batteries are also designed to operate throughout a range of voltages. Now, most of the time, especially with well-engineered radios, manufacturers of these radios have already taken into account the fact that we need to operate within a wide voltage range. It's quite common to find operating voltages for QRP radios in the 9 to 16 volts or 9 to 15 volt range these days. Now, it's probably out of the scope of this video, but some considerations for choosing the right QRP radio for field or off-grid work are making sure it has a wide voltage input and the ability to be recharged in the field. Now, for those of us with radios like the Zygu G90 or the Discovery TX500, radios which actually don't have an internal battery pack, we can still use the Lightsaver Max as the primary portable power supply for these radios. Lengthwise, the Powerfilm Lightsaver Max has end caps on either end to protect the ports and connectors found underneath. The top and bottom of the Lightsaver Max are flat while the sides are rounded. It's around the top plate, bottom plate, and rounded sides where the integrated solar panel is stored when not in use. When the integrated solar panel is in its stored position, it has bungee cords that wrap around the enclosure or the body of the Lightsaver Max to hold it in place and out of the way. When we want to unroll the solar panel for use, we simply remove those bungee cords from the body of the Lightsaber Max. Then we unroll the solar panel as we would an old style rolled up map. As soon as the Lightsaber Max is unrolled, as long as there's sun or daylight out, it will start charging. You can tell it's charging by the state of the battery status and charging indicator found on one end of the Lightsaber Max. 
As we begin inspecting the Lightsaber Max, it becomes apparent the integrated solar panel is actually quite small. Now here at 65 degrees north, it takes about 6 hours to fully charge the Lightsaber Max using the integrated solar panel. If you're using or operating the Lightsaber Max at a lower latitude, it'll charge faster. If you're at a higher latitude or sometime during the winter, when the sun is low in the sky, it'll take longer. With that said, we can actually recharge the Lightsaber Max in as little as two hours using one of the various charging methods we'll talk about in just a second. Now we already know the Lightsaber Max can be charged through its integrated solar panel, but it can also be charged through USB-C or through its DC port. The DC port is located just next to the battery status and charging indicator we showed you earlier. So recharging is a critical aspect of field operations, especially extended field operation. So the Lightsaber Max can be charged or recharged or simultaneously charged and powered up through its USB-C port with your car's accessory outlet, or for example, a power supply, or by daisy chaining the Lightsaber Max with another solar panel. In this example, I'm going to daisy chain the Lightsaber Max with a 20 watt power film panel. From the 20 watt folding panel, I use its Delphi connection and the cable, which terminates as a accessory socket similar to the one in your car. I take the female accessory charging cable, which was included with the Lightsaber, and plug that into the accessory socket. Then plug the other end directly into the Lightsaber Max. And that's it. The Lightsaber Max will start charging automatically using both solar panels. Just in case it's not clear, what we've done is augment the integrated solar panel of the Lightsaber Max with an external solar panel. This is very much like connecting two solar panels in parallel to increase the wattage. So if you've been following along, your next question is probably going to be, what's the maximum amount of wattage I can augment the Lightsaber Max with? And actually, that's a 30 watt panel. Finally, we can connect up to a 60 watt panel to the Lightsaber Max without damaging it. However, the Lightsaber Max will only make use of 30 watts of power from an external solar panel. Now, if I were one of these tech channels on YouTube, I would start reading out of the user manual, quoting technical specifications to you on video. Specs you could actually read from the user manual yourself, so we're not actually going to do that. Instead, I'm going to jump on my fat bike. I'm going to take the TX500 from Lab 599, the Powerfilm Lightsaber Max, the Super Antenna MP1, and we're going to do some SSB QRP work in the field. Portable QRP. Oscar Hotel 8 Sierra Tango November Portable Station. I repeat, Oscar Hotel number 8 Sierra Tango November Portable Station. QSL? One hundred percent, and you're still five by five. Excellent copy. Uh, can you tell me what are your operating conditions? Okay, the operating condition. I work at the wind of our ten. Wind of our ten is forty-one meters long. Forty-one meters long, and I work at the one hundred width. One hundred width. One hundred percent. I'm just amazed by your station. Excellent job. Hey, thank you again for coming back. I wish you luck with your expedition and I hope to work you again someday. QSL? Okay, Oscar Hotel 8, Sugar Tango Nancy slash Broadwood condition. Step down on the moment. One hundred percent. I was just saying, I'm amazed at how well your station is working. Excellent job. Good luck with your expedition, and I hope to work you again someday. Okay, maybe I'll check you later on the weekend. On the weekend day, it's a lighthouse, lighthouse weekend. 
yes, I sent the boat to in Belgium tomorrow, and uh, I do my best, I get you later. Oscar who's going to take on that team, it's like Bordeaux, and I think of Kula B. Thank you, mate, very much. You make the good job. Have a team wait for you, 411, nice day there. Thank you, 73. Bye bye. So I have a small, lightweight, easy to deploy antenna. I have the Discovery TX500 QRP radio. I've got the Lightsaver Max and an additional solar panel, just in case uh, conditions warrant the additional solar power. I really believe the QSO with Papa Delta Zero Romeo Whiskey Lima portable was a very pragmatic demonstration of what the Powerfilm Lightsaver Max actually brings to the table for the portable QRP operator. So for those of us who are operating low power, those of us who have weight restrictions or load restrictions on the amount of comms gear we can carry, perhaps it's time to take a closer look at the Powerfilm Lightsaver Max. If you're supporting this channel on Patreon, PayPal, as a YouTube member, or simply sharing my content, you're absolutely magnificent and I couldn't do it without you. For the rest of you, if you like what I'm doing, if you like the content I'm creating, please leave me a thumbs up and perhaps a comment to let me know. And if it's not too much to ask, please share this video with someone or someplace where people might enjoy it. Rock and roll guys. Thanks for watching. Ciao.